The story of Lilith begins at the very dawn of mankind's legends. Nestled within the ancient pages of Genesis, there, amidst the sacred texts, there's a perplexing duality. One account describes God creating both man and woman together, distinct yet equal. And then there's another narrative that emerges, detailing Adam's formation from the dust of the earth, followed by Eve's creation from his rib, presenting a seemingly secondary role for the first woman. It is within this narrative dichotomy that the legend of Lilith unfolds, offering an alternative tale of humanity's beginnings, according to ancient lore. Lilith was Adam's initial companion, but unlike the more amenable Eve, Lilith was cast from the mold of Adam himself, imbued with the same essence and form, a soul sculpted to stand as his equal. It was this inherent equality that formed the bedrock of Lilith's beliefs, and she sought mutual respect and parity with Adam in all things. Her aspirations for equality, however, were met with resistance. Lilith's insistence on a partnership of equals with Adam disrupted the tranquility of Eden. She was unwilling to concede to a submissive role, and this led to an impasse, an unyielding tension between the world's first inhabitants. The legend says that ultimately the impasse would not be bridged. Compromise was a stranger to Lilith's nature. With staunch determination, she uttered the ineffable name of God, a taboo of immense magnitude, and left Eden. This act was unprecedented, and it symbolized her fierce autonomy and desire for self-determination. Lilith's departure wasn't just a footnote in ancient scriptures, it's a moment of profound gravity that marks the commencement of her legend, a catalyst to a series of events that would echo through the annals of history and myth. With her exodus, Lilith set a precedent for challenging the expected order of the world and in doing so became an emblematic figure, a beacon of defiance against the rules and rules prescribed to her. So, the origins of of Lilith's legend are forever entwined with themes of rebellion, equality, and the complexities of an individual's quest for autonomy. Her story starts at this point of departure, a narrative that pulses with the vigor of dissension and the pursuit of respect and recognition. In the tale of humanity's beginnings as recounted in Genesis, a remarkable figure emerges from the shadows of Eden. This is Lilith, a character enshrouded in mystery and laden with symbolism. Her story begins as she stands equal to Adam, yet waves of discord ripple through paradise when she champions the notion of equality. Lilith's rejection of subservience marks the first act of her departure from the Garden of Eden, an event that forever altered the narrative of mankind's earliest days. Lilith's refusal to acquiesce to a role as Adam's subordinate leads her to make a fateful decision, unable to bridge their differences and with no compromise in sight. She departs Eden, And this act is laced with controversy as invoking God's name, which is forbidden, marks her exit from the garden. The consequences of her departure are immediate and divine. A trio of angels are dispatched with a heaven-sent mandate, bring Lilith back. As with any great narrative of myth in antiquity, the journey is far from simple. Lilith's adamantine will surfaces once again as she is confronted by the angels at the Red Sea. Here, amidst the powerful relentless waves, a peculiar bargain is struck. The determined Lilith agrees to a strange covenant, one where she consents to spare newborn infants adorned with amulets bearing the names of her celestial pursuers. The effect of Lilith's encounter at the Red Sea is profound. Her name becomes both feared and revered. Etched into amulets, her story turns into a bulwark against the night. She is perceived at this point as a nocturnal creature, her presence shadowing the domain of humankind, lingering at the edges of slumber and dream. The creation of the ancient amulets provides a window into the complex narrative of Lilith. It offers insight into how she has been understood and reimagined over the centuries. These artifacts bring to life a multifaceted figure who is not just a character from a story, but a symbol with powerful resonance. The period of the Renaissance, a time of renewed interest in classical learning and the arts, saw Lilith portrayed with a new emphasis. Artists during this time often illuminated biblical tales with a fresh perspective, blending religious themes with human emotions and narratives. Lilith's depiction during the time moved beyond the limitations of a traditional antagonist. Instead, she appeared as a compelling character, embodying both wisdom and wile. In some works, she is seen as the first woman and equal to Adam before Eve, challenging the conventional portrayal of the female role in the creation of myth. As for the amulets, these small yet significant items tell a tale of the cultural impact Lilith had through Jewish folklore. Crafted with care, they were used as protective talismans with the belief that they held the power to ward off Lilith's malevolent influence. 
The names of the three angels sent to retrieve her from the Red Sea were often inscribed upon them, marking a direct line between the myth and the everyday lives of the people of the time. It wasn't just spiritual defense. These artifacts represent the very real human need to interact with cultural mythos, to bring understanding and control to the unseen forces that play in the world. These amulets also remind us of the enduring concern over household welfare, particularly for women and children believed to be most vulnerable to Lilith's vengeful spirit. By embodying the angels' names, these amulets became a focal point for safety and blessings, illustrating the ongoing conversations between the divine, the demonic, and the domestic spheres of life. Lilith's duality is pivotal. She is both Adam's lost partner and a woman who refused to be marginalized. The intertwining paths of religious texts and folklore bring us to the enigmatic presence of Lilith. Her narrative stretches back to the earliest days, to passages written in shadows and whispers. She emerges in the Bible, most notably in the book of Isaiah, where she is referred to as a night creature, a demoness who resides in desolate places. In these scriptures, Lilith becomes synonymous with darkness and chaos. The reference is more than a mere mention. It's a critical literary bridge to a world where the supernatural and the human experience converge. Her depiction as a night demoness aligns her with the formidable forces that were once believed to shape the nocturnal terrains, the wilderness sprawling outside the comforting glow of the village hearth. Beyond the canonical texts, Lilith's story is enriched and expanded with Jewish folklore. Here, she is not just a background figure, but a vivid character in the narratives that sought to explain the mysteries of the world to an inquisitive and spiritual people. Her legend becomes a name whispered in cautionary tales, a specter in the night that challenges the brave and preys upon the vulnerable. But she's not merely a character who frightens. She is a representation of what happens when the established order is questioned. Over time, she has been interpreted not only as a figure of horror, but also as a symbol of power. Her consistent presence through the ages speaks to a shared cultural understanding of what it means to stand against the tide. Within the dark corners of folklore, stories of Lilith carry a warning against rebellion, but they also evoke a sense of intrigue and reverence for her strength and resilience. A formidable figure in these tales, Lilith encapsulates the complex relationship between fear and fascination that defines much of human interaction with the unknown. Her legacy persists not only as a character to be feared in the night, but as an echo of an ancient world grappling with the idea of order, chaos, and the lines drawn in between. The tale of Lilith is more than just an ancient story. It poses a bold challenge to the traditional narratives that have long defined societal roles. In her refusal to be subservient to Adam, Lilith did not just leave Eden, she left a symbolic mark on history. Lilith's quest for equality is a striking contrast to the submissive role traditionally assigned to women in many ancient texts. By standing against the expectations set for her, she embodies the essence of defiance and has become a beacon for conversations about, about challenging the status quo. And her departure from Eden in negotiation with the angels served to underline that defiance can sometimes lead to unforeseen outcomes. This part of Lilith's narrative has been interpreted as an illustration of what happens when individuals take a stand against societal norms. The divine intervention in her tale suggests that even in ancient times, there were consequences for those who deviated from their expected roles. In her aftermath, she is transformed into a figure of the night, mothering demons, seducing men, yet being held at bay by sacred symbols. This transformation offers a stark commentary on how society can demonize those who seek to change entrenched systems of power. It implies that there may be a cost to challenging societal norms, but it also serves as a reminder of the potential strength and influence of such actions. Lilith's enduring legacy within cultural narratives shows that her influence extends far beyond her mythical origins. By continuing to spark dialogue about independence, control, and societal expectations, Lilith's story resonates with those who see value in questioning and reshaping the confines of traditional roles, a narrative that not only challenges but also inspires, suggesting that the desire for self-determination and equality is as timeless as the tales we tell. In Jewish folklore, the legend of Lilith is entwined with the mystical power of protective amulets. As the story goes, after refusing to return to the Garden of Eden, Lilith encountered angels at the Red Sea who were sent to persuade her to come back. She struck a deal with them, which in turn inspired a tradition that would withstand the test of time. To protect their homes and loved ones, people began to create amulets inscribed with the names of these very angels. These artifacts acted as guardians against Lilith's reputed influence, especially her predation upon newborn children and their expected mothers. But what did these amulets look like? 
commonly they are made of materials believed to possess intrinsic protective qualities, such as metals or parchments. They featured inscriptions with the names of the angels and other symbols that were considered paramount in safeguarding against the spiritual threats. These were often hung over cradles or worn on the body, and their use underscored a profound aspect of Jewish cultural practice, the integration of mystical elements into daily life for spiritual defense. The use of these amulets wasn't just a passive act. It was a proactive measure that showed an understanding of the power of the unseen, an acknowledgement that there were forces that individuals could harness in their favor. It speaks to a collective memory with the tradition where Lilith's defiance and formidable nature were confrontable not with fear, but with a clear strategy. In a broader context, Lilith's name on the amulets also serve as a historical marker, reminding the community of Lilith's refusal to succumb to a destiny that was not of her choosing. Thus, while providing protection, they also memorialize Lilith's story, a tale of standing one's ground, as a cultural symbol over generations. The continual crafting and use of these amulets within the Jewish communities serve as a testament to the enduring legacy of Lilith's story. We're going to call it there. Have a great day.